The VIPs in attendance at the Queen's state funeral included 19 serving monarchs, 55 presidents, and 23 prime ministers. But there was one category of invitees whose presence seemed more anachronistic. They included Prince Pavlos of Greece. Crown Prince Pavlos is here. He's travelled to London for Queen Elizabeth's funeral. He's the eldest son and second child of Constantine II, the last king of Greece from 1964 to 1973. Queen Elizabeth is his third cousin, twice removed. Welcome. Thank you for joining Thank us. You. Um, what are your memories of the Queen? Well, the Queen has always been a very um, kind person to my family, mm -hmm. always received us with a smile. Um, my parents were very well uh, taken care of by her when we left Greece and obviously lived in England for many years thereafter. And um, my father was always a good confidant uh, for the family and was always by her side. And sadly, he's not so well now, so he's unable to, to come over. So I'm going with my mother and my wife to stand in uh, for my father. Uh, but the Queen was always receiving us with great uh, smiles and family friendship. Uh, always inquiring about how things were going on back home or elsewhere. Mm. But one of the most wonderful people ever. One of the most wonderful people ever. So, so much has been said about her empathy and yeah. kindness. That's something you saw up yeah. close. Her empathy, her kindness and her service. And she was a real guiding force for the rest of us young people, um, not only from her family, from beyond that, just and, and for her husband as well, Duke of Edinburgh. Both of them were dedicated to their service. And um, that came through in a very natural way to us as well because they'd ask you questions on what you were doing in life and how you were getting on and expected to move on in the right way. And uh, those were great guidelines that she kept till the very end. That interview was notable, not just because the only question posed by the supposedly neutral BBC journalist was, so, so just how kind was the Queen? Can you tell us, give us all the examples of her being kind? But because the supposed Crown Prince of Greece is no such thing. Greece abolished their monarchy in a referendum in 1974. They have no kings, queens, princes, or princesses. But Prince Pavlos is not the only royal pretender who attended the Queen's funeral. This is a screenshot from the Wikipedia page listing attendees at that state funeral. And this is the section of members of non-reigning royal houses. It includes the Archduke of Austria, which is a republic, the Tsar of Bulgaria, which is a republic, the Prince of Venice, which is part of the Italian Republic, and the Crown Prince of Yugoslavia, a country which no longer exists. Aaron, what's the deal here? What's going on? How can the BBC introduce someone as the Prince of Greece? when you know people in Greece are watching and say, we have a prince? We're a republic, we don't have a prince. What's, what's going on? What's the background? How do we understand this? Yeah, I had to say my favourite was the Prince of Venice. Uh, a nice little fact for our viewers out there, the House of Savoy, which was the Italian royal family, of course, they became a republic also by referendum in 1945, 46. Huge majority to, to well, a big majority to become a republic. It was, I think, until 2002 that they weren't physically allowed back in the country, which I just find really like funny. You know, basically they were exiled for 60 years because they weren't trusted to not try and seek a return to power. And I think that underscores all of this, Michael. These people don't give up these titles because they think one day I will be allowed back in. I can be the Tsar of Bulgaria, or maybe there'll be the reformation of the Austro Habsburg Empire, or maybe Greece will have a need for a constitutional monarch above the political fray. Uh, and of course, that might sound ridiculous. You'd say, well, why would they want that? Well, apparently it's good enough for Britain, so why can't it be good enough for Greece? If there was a political crisis. I'm sure those people would make those arguments. And if you think I'm being ridiculous, look at Afghanistan in the uh, aftermath of uh, the occupation in, in 2001-2. There were conversations then about, well, why don't we install a, a monarch? Well, there was a monarch here there until, until I think the 60s. Why don't we reinstall a monarch and they can be above uh, the everyday political fray? Or in Iran, there was, of course, a revolution there in 1979. They got rid of the Shah. His son today is still in the United States and Beverly Hills, raising money and lobbying at the White House. And he still thinks that one day he'll be back in, you know, the Gulistan Palace in Tehran, ruling over his kingdom as he sees it. I think that's the case for lots of these people. They view this as their birthright and that one day they may have a shot at getting it back. It's happened before. Uh, I, I have to say, I think that the... Um, the, the Yugoslavia probably is a bit of a push, Michael, given, like you say, it, it no longer exists as a political entity. Uh, important to say also, it didn't exist until the Treaty of Versailles. It's not like it's some ancient, archaic country. It was put together after 1919. So it was a pretty short-lived political experiment, only, what, 
70 years. And of course, for the majority of that time, it was a republic under a communist regime. So uh, yeah, I think that is, uh, I think that's rather hopeful. But I think others, they think maybe one day, why not? Italy, Greece. And I think this is an important takeaway for our audience, Michael. History doesn't just move in one direction. There are reactionary forces in this world um, who would like those people back in seats of unelected uh, power and authority. And, and that's what the left has historically posed itself against. My take is, and I think sort of some of the arguments I've seen in response to Queen Elizabeth dying is less kind of Whiggish defenses of monarchy, but actually overtly reactionary ones. So yes, we'll see a lot more of these people, I think. This is like all the forces of reaction assembled in a room. And then the entire British media saying this is completely normal and not only normal, it's wonderful. And you do think if you've assembled in, in that room, uh, in, in the funeral, the descendants of all of these people who were overthrown in democratic revolutions or democratic referendums because they were, you know, they were anti-democratic, then to have them there and us all just sort of be celebrating it as, as normal. And I mean, to be honest, if you're watching the BBC there and you don't know the context, you think Greece has a prince which also kind of serves to normalize the monarchy because it's like, like, oh no, everyone's got a monarch. Austria's got an archduke. Greece has got a prince. Even Venice has got a prince. It's like, no, these people are pretending. They're not real royals. They abolished it. And maybe we should do that too.